us as powerful as we are. Finally, self-control. It's not, but not the least. It is the most difficult fruit to produce. It is that fruit that allowed me to walk away from my peanut addiction. It is that fruit that can help you walk away from alcohol addiction, from pornography. Don't give any money to any agencies, please. There are people that go to certain clinics to eat right for two weeks and their levels are all down. When they come back, they go haywire to compensate for what they didn't eat there. There they were eating healthy. Here they want to eat junk immediately. You know, you, your body has this insatiable appetite. If you give up some junk for 30 days, the first thing that you want to get back to on the 31st day is the junk. <laughs> What, do, what am I hungry for when I land from African trip or Russia trip or Hungarian trip or any trip back into the airport? Hamburger. A nice old juicy hamburger. The American great. <laughs> you may call it junk, but that is feast for me. <laughs> because there is no place on earth you can enjoy the hamburger with such big buns and... <laughs> Am I making you hungry? <laughs> we still have two hours to go. No, no, no. <laughs> My wife told me just a month ago, Honey, I want to live in the Garden of Eden and uh, eat of all the fruits that God asked me to eat except that one. Yes. The fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I want to do that, you know, and um, uh, you know what, and she asked me, what made Adam and Eve eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? I said, I don't know. Only two people, only to two people I answer, I don't know. One is to God, second is to my wife. When God asks me a question, I tell him, I, I don't know, Lord, please explain. When my wife, wife asked me a question, I said, no, I don't know. What, what do you think? <laughs> they are in the same place with me. <laughs> so she said, you know, I mean, it's, it's a powerful revelation to me. So if, I, if she can allow me to preach that. It's a, I mean, the, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is nothing but selfishness. Adam and Eve were focused on following God and listening to God and obeying God up until that point. And the devil took that focus away from them. Look at you. You deserve it. Don't you like it? Don't you want to eat it? So I like to eat it. I want it. I, I, I. So she said, she concluded the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is nothing but selfishness, self, self-centeredness, self, 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 self. And that's what we are filled with in this world. Yes. I, me, my. Yes. They're all eating that fruit. But what, immediately I turned around and told her, at the same time God is giving me this message on self-control. I told her, only through self-control can we say no to self. Mm -hmm. Because the devil comes to tempt us in our self every day. Amen. You deserve it. Do it. There is nothing is going to be wrong, you know. But when you have discipline, when you have self-control, You'll be able to say no to the devil and be able to live in the Garden of Eden, eating everything else that God wants you to eat and abide by the rules that God has given you and enjoy the heavenly blessings that God has given you. Amen. So only through self-control can you say no to selfishness or overcome self. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. You know, I read that verse in several translations and this is how it is. In Amplified Bible, God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and cringing and fawning fear. Some of you are going to be delivered from fear.
today. Amen. Because fear is also an obsessive enemy yes. that is hanging over you. God is going to set you free. God has not given us the spirit of timidity, of cowardice, or craven and cringing and fawning fear. But he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of, this is what sound mind is, calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. Yes. Self-control is sound mind. Sound mind is self-controlled mind. So whenever fear comes to hit you, James was telling how Satan is really running rampant to stop everything that James and Kim are doing. No, that's what he will do. But we are going to be disciplined to continue with the course, yes, continue with the theology, continue with the education, continue with what God has started in you, my yes. beloved couple. Yes. Philippians 1, 6, He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Those of you who are threatened with sickness and disease about to kill you, you should say, I shall not die, right. but live yes. and declare the works of the Lord. Right. I am praying for Michelle. You know, I'm, she is not going to die, but shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. So whatever trying, uh, is trying to take you down, That's right. with your spiritual mind, with your self-discipline, yes. You tell the enemy that you're not subjecting yourself to fear anymore. Quickly, I want to tell you three things that you need to produce the fruit of the Spirit. Number one is God's Word. There is no fruit without a seed, right? In order to have mango, I need to plant a seed of mango on the ground and allow the plant to come up and nurture it and water it and fertilize it and, and protect it from suckers and all those things. And finally, mango is being reproduced from the seed that you planted. The seed is the Word of God. You have to have the Word of God. There is no way that you can produce the fruit of the Spirit without the Word going into you. Seed being planted in your soul. I don't have time to take you through Mark chapter 4 verses 3 through 9, but go home and read it. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus talks about the parable of the sower that sows the seed. There are seven stages I want you to notice in that. The seven stages are, first stage, the seed falls on the wayside and, and birds come and take the seed. Interpretation, Satan comes and destroy the promise, the word that God has given you that morning. Second place where the seed falls upon is on a place where there is no earth except rocky, rocky foundation. So when the, the plant cannot grow, even if it grows a little bit, the sun scorches at it and the plant dies. That means there is no foundation. There are people that are blaming God for something bad happened in their life because they don't have the foundation of God in their life. God is merciful. God is gracious. God is long-suffering. God is just. God is loving. So I need to prepare my life based on the foundation of God's Word to understand God. The third place where the seeds fall is among the thorns. When the plant comes up, the thorns are choking the plant. Which means you have received a promise, but you've got bills to pay. You've got to compete with your neighbor who has got a 55-inch TV. You want to get a 56-inch TV, otherwise you're going to die. The cares of this world, the, the, the deceitfulness of riches, all of those things choke the, oh yeah, God gave you a promise, yeah, okay, God cannot, God, I don't believe. I'm going to go borrow money and get the TV, otherwise I cannot sleep. If you have that, you need to be delivered from that addiction this afternoon. So the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches all can choke the plant. That is the third category. Fourth place, the, the, the seeds are falling on good ground. Amen. Mark doesn't explain it, but one day my wife told me. She asked me a question. What is a good ground, honey? I told her, what is it? <laughs> 
thou shalt know the answer. She said, the answer is found in Luke chapter 8 verse 15. It's an honest heart. A transparent heart is good ground. Mark doesn't explain that, but Luke does. An honest heart, a transparent heart. So if you get away from Satan stealing your promises, if you get away from the lack of foundation choking the promises of God, if you can get away from the deceitfulness of riches killing the plant, you come to prepare your soil. David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, yes. and renew a right spirit within me. Yes. And that is a transparent heart. That is preparing the heart to become an honest heart. That's the fourth stage. Then you produce 30-fold. With all these things, you produce only 30-fold. You don't like it. Lord, I want more. Then you go to the next stage, sixth stage, where you produce 60-fold. Then you produce 100-fold. You see, there are seven stages. I've been in all of them. I want to produce hundredfold. And hundredfold yield is the fruit of the Spirit. Hundredfold yield. That's where God is bringing. For those of you that want to delve into the Word of God. Amen. 20 years ago, I was praying with my emotions. God, don't you have the eyes to see what I'm going through? <laughs> I'm crying. It's okay to cry out to God with your emotions, but now when a need comes in my time of prayer, immediately there is a verse of scripture that pops in before me. God is answering the need with a word right in front of me. So you have to put the word in, no, no matter how busy you are in your life. Make time to read the word every day. Every day. Make time to read just a few verses of scriptures every day. If you read five chapters a day, you'll finish the Bible in 10 months and repeat it again. If you read 10 chapters a day, you'll finish it in five months. Read whatever you need to read and read a, a chapter of Proverbs that day. Read the book of Psalms several times. Yes. You will know how to fight against the enemy. Yes. Put the word into your heart. Yes. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, now stands in the way of sinners, now sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season. That's right. Its leaves shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Shall prosper. And that is what I am talking about. Just read the word every day. Read. Second, have fellowship with God every day. Have fellowship. John chapter 15, again I don't have time to take you through John chapter 15 uh, verses 1 through uh, 8. Go home and read it. Fellowship with God. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit all get involved in this particular thing of Jesus being the vine. We are the branches. Yes. And the Father is the gardener. He prunes. The Father is, is the pruner. And He just takes the suckers out. He prunes the branches that don't produce any fruit. And the Holy Spirit is the nutrient. It supplies the water, it supplies the nutrients, it supplies the food, it supplies everything. And Father takes care of the plant and He is pleased when it produces more fruit. Every branch that does not abide in me, my Father takes it away. That means there is no producing fruit without being with Jesus. There is no producing fruit without allowing the Father to prune you. And sometimes He'll prune you. He says, don't go here, my son, that's not for you. That's not for you. You have to say yes to the pruning. And when you do that, we come to a life where if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, it shall be done unto you. It is the fellowship. I tell you, this is a powerful message. We hang out with the Father and the Son and the Spirit of God. That's when we start producing love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. You see, there is no shortcut. Finally, the third thing that you need to do is prayer. 
every day. Just spend a few minutes in prayer. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, you shall find. And knock, it shall be opened unto you. Amen. I told you, long time ago, when the message was, asking is simple. You can sit in your place and ask. But seeking means you have to stand up from the place you are sitting. And you have to keep on. Okay. Okay. Is it coming? Is it coming? Is it coming in your prayer times? And the knocking requires not only sitting and seeking, but walking. Walking. Walking a long distance and coming to the door. And knock. That means diligence. Prayer. I told the Lord when He asked me to build this place, prayer center. Lord, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a builder. I'm not a businessman. So don't please bog me down with all these things that I have to do that I lose my sleep over dumb things. I want to hang out with you. If you love me, don't take that away from me. And you know what? God loves me so much that I still have fun with my God every day. Amen. Amen. I have an office there in my prayer center. I spend 99% of my time in the sanctuary, in the altar, probably 1% of time in the office. When I mentioned that, Rachel, scree Rachel shouted, me, shouted at me back from the sound booth. Yeah, you are spending 99% here because I'm spending 99% there. <laughs> <laughs> but God answered my prayer. Amen. Don't take that away from me. I want to hang out with you. I want to have fellowship with you. Everything that I'm doing is an outflow of what God is putting on the inside of me. Amen. That's how wonderful God is. Yes. I love Him. Yes. He answers my prayer. Yes. He answers my prayer. I, 40 years ago, my answer will come after 40 days of fasting. But now my answers come quickly. With an exception of a couple of things. They're also coming. Because the devil cannot succeed. Hallelujah. He cannot hold back the answers anymore. My God is wonderful. So only in prayer can you learn, son, don't hate that person. Love this person. Because I died for this person. Pray for this person. Forgive this person. God will convict you. God will comfort you. God will minister to you. Hallelujah. So this afternoon, Let's make a decision for God. Lord, help me produce the fruit of the Spirit in my life. Yes. I want to be loving as you are loving to me. I want to have joy because Jesus is in my life. I want to have peace because the Holy Spirit is within me. No matter how my body feels or not, it doesn't matter. And I want to be patient because you are patient with me. And I want to be kind. I want to be good. I want to be gentle. I want to have faith. I want to have faithfulness. And I want to have self-control to walk away from alcohol. Walk away from addiction. Walk away from nicotine. Walk away from all of those things that are junk in my life. That are ruining my life, Lord God. Yes. I told myself I should not be addicted to anything other than God. So please get away addiction in the name of Jesus. That's why I'm speaking to you today from my experience. And I know God can heal you, not only heal you today, deliver you today, but if you make a dedication to God today, yes. Lord, I want to produce, I want to reproduce you in my life, yes. all of you, so that the people can be drawn toward you, Lord. Not toward a dead religion, but toward you. Help me to love the unlovable. Help me to forgive those people that, that should not be forgiven. Help me to be gentle with my employees, with my workers, yes, with my co-workers, yes. with my bosses. Help me not to be mean because you have given me everything. If I am mean, I have not enjoyed you the way I am supposed to enjoy you. Please forgive me. I want you to reveal yourself to me so that I can enjoy you so much, Lord God. So I'm giving you this altar call today for those of you who can be bold, who can be aggressive, who can be honest. Remember, 
Only a transparent heart can produce the fruit of the Spirit. You need to be transparent before Him. You need to be honest before Him. If you don't have it, say to Him, Lord, I don't have it, I want to have it. And if there are addictions in your life that are forbidding you from getting close to where God wants you to be, deal with it right now in this, in this service and be bold about it and be honest about it. Be forthright about it, just as I was, I am. Even today, I'm standing only by the grace of God. I am as weak as you are, but I have made up in my mind with self-controlled, strong, disciplined mind, Lord, I am going to follow you and you only. Yeah, amen. No other junk should come into my life. I renounce all the other junk. I only want you, Lord God. So I'm not there. But I want God to take me to a higher level, from glory to glory, from victory to victory, from faith to faith. Hallelujah. So if you want to join me in that journey, I'm going to open the altar for you to respond. Only those of you that want to be transparent before the Lord. And I'm not going to pinpoint your addictions. I'm not going to expose you. It is between you and God. But God is going to set you free, yes. as He has been setting me free. So that is my call to you. So with all the heads bowed, with all the eyes closed,